Welcome, and I'm glad you could join me as we quickly look at how to set up the Salesforce NetSuite CPQ to billing process template. Let's dive in. In this video, we will follow these steps. First, we will prepare the Salesforce instance. Second, we will prepare the NetSuite instance. Third, we will install the included projects in Cloud Studio. Fourth, we will configure the project variables in Cloud Studio. Fifth, we will test the connections in Cloud Studio, both the NetSuite and the Salesforce connections. And finally, we will run and deploy the workflows in Cloud Studio. With all that out of the way, let's begin with the Salesforce zip package deployment process. First, let's locate the Salesforce zip package provided with the process template. This package is located in the Salesforce package folder. To deploy this package, we will use the Salesforce Workbench. Open and log into the Salesforce Workbench, reviewing the environment and API versions, as well as agreeing to the terms of service. If you are not already logged into Salesforce, you will be prompted to do so now. Next, Hover over Migration and select Deploy. On the Deploy screen, click Choose File and browse to the Salesforce custom field zip file and click Next. After the zip file has finished loading, click Deploy. We will need to define the custom field security and accessibility. Go ahead and log into the Salesforce Classic UI. Look over to the left under Build and expand the Customize section. And then expand the object to which you want to verify that the custom fields have been added. In this example, we will check a custom fields for the contact object. So expand Contacts and select Fields. On the Fields screen, Verify that the custom fields have been added. Click the link that is the fields label to access a custom fields definition details. Now, click Set Field Level Security to define the appropriate field level security visibility settings. Define the appropriate field level security visibility settings. In this case, we want all selected as visible and click Save. Then return to the previous screen and click on View Fields Accessibility to set the accessibility for a particular field. From the drop down, select the same custom field from the earlier step. On the appropriate profile, click the link in the Fields Access column to modify the configuration for the authenticated website profile. On the Access Settings screen for the field under the Page Layout section, make sure the Visible checkbox is checked and click Save to confirm the setting. Repeat the process for each field included as a part of the Salesforce Custom Field Package. Now let's prepare our NetSuite instance. This process template was built to work with the NetSuite companies that have the multi-currency feature enabled. So let's make sure it's enabled. To do this, log into the NetSuite instance as an administrator. And along the top menu bar, navigate to Setup, Company, Enable Features. Within the Company tab, scroll down to the International section and verify that multiple currencies is selected. Next, standard forms are preferred when inserting new objects for contacts, customers, inventory items, sales orders, and invoices. To configure your NetSuite instance to use standard form, stay logged in as administrator and along the top menu bar, navigate to the customization, Forms, and Entry Forms. On the Custom Entry Forms screen, 
you will see a list of the different forms available to enter new contacts, new customers, and more. Click the subtype column to order the forms by objects. Once you have identified the standard form, in this case, the standard contact form, confirm the preferred column is checked and then click Submit. Now it's time to install the process template. Log into the Jitterbit Harmony portal and open Cloud Studio. Click on Import and you will import each of the project files listed in the documentation guide. For this tutorial, I'll just do the first one. When importing each project file, make sure to select Include Success and Failure Emails and Include Schedules. After importing the project, the project opens automatically. Each project has its own independent set of project variables whose values need to be set in each project. To get to the project variables list, click the action menu icon, that is the three dots at the top of the project pane, and from the menu select project variables. Then set or modify the values as appropriate. Once you're done, click the X at the top, which will take you back to the projects. There is a list of variables that need to be changed and definitions to help you determine the appropriate setting for each variable in the supporting documentation guide. I will apply the appropriate variable settings for my connector and will be ready to test each endpoint connector. Now that I have the appropriate variable settings applied and I click the X at the top, I am back at the project. Prior to running any of the project operations, we need to open each of the configured connectors, both Salesforce and NetSuite, to test the connection to confirm that the supplied credentials work at each endpoint. First, I will check NetSuite to see if the connection is successful. To do this, double click on the NetSuite connector and scroll down to the bottom where you see a button called Test. When that button is clicked, it will take all the variable settings that you input while configuring your variables to see if the connection is successful to your specific NetSuite connector. If it was successful, you'll see a green message saying connection success. If it was not successful, you will get an error message. I see that my connection was successful and it was set up correctly and I will click the X at the top and do the same thing for the Salesforce connector. Now it's time to start triggering the proper workflow in the proper order. It is important that you install, configure, and test connectors of all the projects listed in the documentation guide. Once this step has been completed, you can deploy and run each project in the proper order as listed in the documentation guide. If you have any questions or run into any trouble, please check out the process template troubleshooting information located in Success Central at success.jitterbit.com.